Hello, Battle Riot fans, and welcome to Champions at Dawn. I'm your host, Shadow Fury 333 with a bunch of replays kindly donated by Skybrush. Thank you, Skybrush. So, Skybrush, as far as I can tell, is primarily a serious player. They're also playing serious. So, this game, we have Skybrush and Cartman versus... Renarajki and Cantona. Sorry, I don't know why it took me so long to figure out what that name was, but yes. So, Renarajki going as Pearl and Cantona with an Ashka, which... See, this composition is going to be a interesting one, because at this point, Red Team is going to be relying a fair bit on kiting. We'll probably see Renarajki going in a fair amount, Pearl being Pearl. Kind of a bit of a forward hero for a support hero, which, I mean, I'm saying a lot, because we are watching somebody play Sirius, and... Sirius is the only melee support hero, so, hey, we're gonna have probably both supports just on the front lines while Cartman and Cantona just hang out in the back. And so far, interestingly as well, we see that Skybrush going for the Crest Wound battle, right? Which is interesting. I mean, I personally like that one myself. It's the one I tend to go for because I do like the idea of a bonus damage and super long weaken. Of course, Cartman going for evasion for the stealth. Well, rather the meterless immaterial, because that's super important. That's pretty much it, the battle, right? Cantona going for Searing, Flight, Ignite, and everyone going for all the battle rights that make sense. Ren Rajki with the charge and dive, and already starting out, we have, as mentioned already, we have Ren Rajki and, actually, never mind, Skybrush trying to go for Cantona, really just wants to 2v1 Cantona as much as possible, and getting Ren Rajki out of the fight quickly. Pretty much that seems to be the goal here. Get Renarashki out of the fight, because if that happens, obviously Cantona doesn't get much healing. And also, it means that you don't have the power and the disabling that you get from trying to fight a Pearl head-on. So that's basically this entire thing, is that red team being pushed out of the side as well, and being pushed out of the center. Looks like Cantona's trying to get behind blue team to get in the center. And actually, at this point, blue team having a bit of a hard time holding. Cantona looks like they're about to go down, but Renarashki is still nice and healthy and a nice and healthy pearl is really bad news if you're trying to fight them and at this point another nice lunar strike from skybrush very well done there unfortunately cantona well for skybrush good for cantona though nice little fire blast or what's, i can't remember why can't blank on the name sorry about that but yes good's done and now at this point cartman in the center really afraid to go for that orb though finally manages to get an opening to get to that orb and able to get rid of Cantona, able to get rid of, the, get rid of the rune, but not unfortunately able to get rid of Ren Rashki. So Ren Rashki should be able to take out Cartman pretty much now. Ren Rashki has full access to all the healing, all the energy. Are they going to throw down a fish? Nope, not even going to bother. Just nice little volatile water shot. That gets rid of it. Flame Strike. That was the word I was looking for. That was Ash's move. So good job for Red Team. First match goes to them. And this is what I mean by Pearl. Just Pearl's scary. Pearl's also, I think, my best hero win rate wise, but yeah, Pearl is terrifying. So immediately Skybrush going for Blinding Light, getting that blind on Celestial Split. Another fairly common battle, right? A lot of serious players go over that one. It is just stopping your opponent from doing, especially against a ranged opponent. Like against two ranged focused heroes, you pretty much gotta go for that. And Cantona with the Searing Flight Shield, and Ran Rajki with Tidal Wave with the Bubble Barriers. Nice counter setup. And. Well, interesting. I'm not sure why Carmen went for the Blast Bolt stun. I mean, Carmen hasn't really been getting that close to Red Team at all, so. I'm not really sure what the motivation there is. Nice snipe there. Didn't even have to trick anything, just worked out. I mean, at that point, I'm fairly certain that Ran Rajki didn't have their counter to begin with, but still, nice job. Carmen takes the center orb, and at this point, Skybrush. Kind of a bit of a 2v1 situation here, just letting Cartman support from the sidelines. And Skybrush actually doing pretty well for themselves. So Cantona... Cantona and Ren Rajki both very near to each other. I mean, there's not really much reason not to be. Although unfortunately for Cantona, they're about to... Die. There goes Cantona and Ren Rajki now on their own, 2v1 against two full health opponents. I mean, this is a really bad... They're in the corner as well. That's probably game. Yeah, that's definitely game. Oof, man, they just used the mobility ability right before the snipe came out. That was not what they wanted to do. I mean, they kind of had to. They were, they were in a corner. They were literally in a corner. There was nothing they could really do. And 
their counter, I suppose, could have worked, but I'm fairly certain that was on cooldown. Like, Tidal Wave, I'm fairly certain it was on cooldown. They... Bubble Barrier might would have probably worked, but at that point, it's like, dive, get away, hope for the best. Didn't quite work. Didn't quite get behind this either. It didn't get behind the obstacle, so the snipe really just did it. Although, I'm a bit surprised how well snipes are working here. I mean, that one did miss, but still, like... Snipes are something I've noticed a lot of people getting really good at countering recently, and I didn't check how long ago this game was played. I'll check that afterwards. But snipes are something that people have been getting at all levels better at countering. They hear that sound and just go, oh shoot, I gotta counter. I gotta deal with that. Gotta counter, gotta jump, gotta get away, bubble barrier, do something. Like anything that stops the projectile from hitting them. But it's kind of funny, because while snipe is definitely a scare, and okay, we do see that Cantona, nice little dodge there. And Carmen actually not managing to hit with that ultimate, which is a little bit disappointing. Overall, though, neither team is losing a whole lot. Unfortunately, Skybrush, or for them, Skybrush is getting hit by Jaws and put into a very bad position. Gets out before the Flame Strike hits, although admittedly that Flame Strike is a little bit too late, to be quite honest. That's definitely a coordination thing. And nice counter coming from Renarajki, definitely playing for the snipe. Unfortunately, Cantona, for them, they don't really have a counter. And their steering flight was clearly on cooldown. But yes, that is still... The red team does have the center. Red team has center. Blue team way lower on health. Overall, this match is going nicely for the red team. And that Celestial Split did not quite get the center orb. Nice Ash Goldman taking out Skybrush and Ken, well, Cartman's kind of in a tight spot there. Obviously, they want to be fighting one-on-one -on -one if they can. But it's like doing that in this situation when you're dealing with two ranged heroes. That's extremely difficult. The Sabling Shot should be off of cooldown, but doesn't matter. Nice charge volatile water there to finish the match for red team. So at this point, I mean that match was basically red team managed to gradually get to the center. The first mass match that blue team won was essentially, I mean blue team had the center for the beginning, but mostly just gradually pushing them out. In that first match we saw blue team had the center and then sacrificed it and kind of got into some weird 2v1 situations. We'll see what goes on here. At this point, we also have that extra healing coming from the red, from the blue side to the red side. Much more confident, going for, well, actually, interestingly, Firewall for Cantona, going for the Firewall Firestorm Bolts, which isn't doing much, and oof, that Petrified did not do a whole lot, unfortunately. That's really the thing you want with Sirius, is those Lunar Strikes to hit, to get those 2v1s. And that's a big part of the game plan, and no counter, surprisingly, and a little bit late in the bubble barrier, too. Runner Rash Key, I mean, they've been doing fine, but that's... Still gotta hurt. And, okay, there's where that battle right comes in with the Firestorm Bolts. Not a whole lot of igniting going on, though. I mean, blue team, very careful, trying to stay just out of range of that Ashes. Trying to stay just out of range of Cantona. And Cantona pretty much avoiding all the damage from Jade's ultimate there. Good snipe, though, and holds red team in one position, dealing most of the damage to Cantona. At this point, Renarashki is doing fine, but Cantona is almost dead. Good snipe and nice little revolver shots right after us to finish the job. Now, 2v1, but Pearl in a 2v1 situation is still scary, although admittedly, losing that orb is a bit of a problem. Nice time counter, though. That was a wonderful counter from Renarashki. But the Petrify allowing blue team to set up, and there goes the snipe. Nice timing on the snipe. That's pretty much perfect timing. But Dive does charge that. Jaws missing. So that's going to leave Ranarashki pretty much open for death. What was that? Just double check. Was that the snapshot or snipe? No, disabling shot into... No. Ultimate. Ah... Right, because the ultimate, of course, the first the first hit would hit, and the second hit would be... Well, first hit would hit the counter, but the second hit keeps going. And, I mean, only as much you can do. Good reason to take that title, the... I should say, the Tidal Wave Barrier Battle right. Oh, interesting, okay, so Ren Rashki wants the extra silence duration, and Cantana had gone for reducing movement speed and Ignite. I don't see a lot of Ignites going off on blue team, though. They've been very careful to kite Cantona to keep just out of reach because they don't want to get hit. Obviously, you don't want to get hit. Like, that is super important. That's why I was saying Skyburst is going to be rushing in, but we weren't going to see a whole lot of rushing. We're seeing a lot of range play. We haven't seen that this entire match. With, of course, Skyburst being the lone exception. And nice dodge in the flame strike there. 
So Skybrush going in once again. Good counter. That was a little... And that's one of those things that's a bit hard to react to. Getting those counters off. And Skybrush had the counter out for probably about half a second. But yeah, that's... And turns around again. So counter goes in. But then nice Lunar Strike from Skybrush. Doesn't quite manage to take advantage but for a 2v1 there. Celestial Split was on cooldown. So getting back in would have involved walking. And I guess an Ashka trying to walk in on that would have been rather difficult. Would have been rather non-trivial. And Skybrush getting focused down. Ultimating, but a nice flame strike from Cantona finishes that off and avoiding the counter as well. Well done. Just a lot of small shots from Cantona. It's really has been doing a lot of work for them. Nice bubble berry, but is that oh okay, bubble berry into firewall. A little bit overkill when it comes to avoiding projectiles, but it worked, and hey, that's the match for red team. Nice done, Cantona and Ranarajki, so good job. Really focused down Skybrush there. I mean, really, really focused down Skybrush there. It's like Start out, Skybrush sort of being a bit cautious, and then moves in a little bit, and then really goes in, hits the counter. Well, after the silence, it's just get the silence, and then a bit more damage coming in, trying to avoid getting hit. An ultimate, okay, that one ultimate really did the trick, and then afterwards, it's like, no one cares about what's happening with, Ken, with Carmen. It's all Skybrush. All the focus is on getting rid of Skybrush, and then after that, it's just, well, Jade in a 2v1 situation against two characters with dedicated moves for dealing with ranged characters. Yeah. Very difficult matchup to deal with in a 1v2 situation, and that worked nicely, so good job for the red team. Anyway, that was that match, so... Move on to the next one. The next one is all gonna be Skybrush tonight. Skybrush versus stuff. Skybrush, 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 that's what it's gonna be. Because Skybrush was so nice and donating these replays. Thank you, Skybrush. And if you guys want to see your replays cast here, please, just, I'm on the Discord, just go ahead, give me a direct message, and let me know, hey, I got these replays, could you cast them please? And I'll more than likely say yes. Anyway, next match is going to be Skybrush and only hardcore, Skybrush and of course is serious and only hardcore with a Bako, against Aimgod with Ashka and Axter with Lucy, which is interesting because we just saw an Ashka and Pearl opponent team, well, Rather different matchup, because it was Ashken Pearl against, of course, Sirius and the Jade. But now we have Sirius and Bako. So basically, red team's going to be just trying to kite as best they can. Blue team's most likely going to have center control most of the time. It's going to come down to whether or not blue team tries to really push. I mean, this map, this is a relatively small center. A lot of room for getting around. A lot of little walls just peppered around the arena, so for ranged characters, kiting around while still maintaining a decent amount of center control or center pressure is not impossible. This is probably one of the better maps, I'd say, for a Lucy Ash to set up. Anyway, right out of the bat, nice Lunar Strike from Skybrush, keeping that Lucy on their own, but once, like, Lucy, man, getting rid of Lucy is very difficult. A good Lucy can just kite you forever, but nice double charged, double charged strike there. That's what you want, a serious. It's like the charge strike, and then you have the sec the sunrise into another charge strike. I mean, that is perfect. Another sunrise, another charge strike. Orb stolen by the red team, though. Blue team put most of the damage on that, but nice to done. Red team taking control of the center. Unfortunately for red team, not particularly healthy. And ultimate coming out from only hardcore. Finishing off that Lucy. Now at this point, in God on their own. I mean, trying to deal with that. I mean, that Baco... Pretty good bulwarks on that back up. It's working out nicely, doing a lot of work, and okay, Aim God killing themselves to finish the round. Axter, that was the name. I'm, I apologize. The but yeah, that was a good start for Skybrush and only Hardcore. I mean, I feel like Aim God and Axter had a decent strategy of what to do around the mid game. They just, like, around here, you know, it was a good idea. Get in the center, try to. Try to just keep as much as you can, but the problem is that their health was so low. I mean, actually, that's not the point. It was a bit earlier. But yeah, it was just, all the damage they took over in the corner meant that later on, when they had the center, like... Yeah, they had a decent control of the center and everything, but they just didn't have the health to maintain it. So anyway, on to round two. We have Skybrush and only Hardcore going for... Well, okay, Skybrush going for the blinding once again. Only Arctar going for health, with Axter 
going for Clarity Potion on sn or Snare on Clarity Potion. Really wants to make sure that blue team can't move around. Very good choice. And Aim God going for the Searing's Blight Shield. Which makes a lot of sense. I mean, that's generally a good, solid pick for Ashka. And at this point, red team being much more aggressive than the last round. Really wanted to make sure. And nice Petrify coming in from Aim God and another one coming in from Skybrush. Trying to keep them out of the match. Although at this point, Skybrush has taken a fair amount of damage. He's taken a good 100 damage so far. And that's pulling them out of the fight. So only Hardcore in a bit of a 2v1 situation. I mean, not a terrible situation for Abako, but still, this is unfortunate. And now, Axe are being pushed out of the group. I mean, at this point, we're getting double 1v2. Sorry, double 1v1. And now both teams are back together. But for a little while, their blue team and red team surrounded. Nice Searing Flight escape from Aim God out of that Lunar Strike. Putting that on cooldown, and at this point, blue team is basically taking all the damage. Red team's hardly taking any, I mean, relatively speaking. That Lucy is putting in work just to heal everything up. And also just to keep everything down. At this point, Lucy has not lost any actual health. And good bolts coming in, and just good petrifies. I mean, really, at this point, that's what red team needs. And of course, Skybrush is going to be doing all the Luna Strikes they can. But really, red team needs the petrifies. And another nice dodge from Aim God out of that Luna Strike. But yeah, between the Petrify Bolts and EX Flame Strike, I mean, that's all the Petrify they need just to get out of there. And very good setups there. That's how you want to use Petrify. If you Petrify both teams, just free one of the members and then deal with them as best as possible before the Petrify's over. Luna Strike hits Aim God, although Clarity Potion coming out from Axter, that's what you want to see. That's what you want your Lucy for, and that's what Lucy does. Just all the support. So yeah, Clarity Potion in particular is just great for this setup. I mean, in this matchup in general, you know that there is going to be, obviously, Lunar Strike, and probably you're going to have Blind on Celestial Strike as well. And we do have that battle right taken. So Red Team with solid control of the center, Blue Team falling apart. We're already in a sudden death. Sheesh. But yeah, Blue Team just trying desperately to get back in here, but this is going to be the death knell. Ultimate being set up. Not sure why it went for Firestorm right out of the Petrified. And Lunar Strike hitting no escapes. Or either that or the escapes didn't get used. Regardless, though, nice Searing Flight to kill Skybrush and only Hardcore on their own. 1v2 as Bako is definitely possible with the nice Bulwarks, but at this point, it's gonna be difficult. I mean, like I said, Axe taking no damage. Aim God, oh, they're taking damage, they're getting shields all the time, so you have to fight through about 200 HP to get through that, and that was just... That was very good aggression from Red Team. So at this point, Blue Team's probably gonna wanna focus down that Lucy. Focus down Axter hard, because really, that was stopping everything. I mean, you have a Luna Strike, okay, Clarity Potion. You have any anything being reflected from Bulwark, okay, Clarity Potion. And pe both Axter and Aim God have Petrify, but Aim God, you have to be right next to them. So at least Scabbers and Online Hardcore can use Blood Axe and use EX, well, EX Slash Strike. It's like, you have, you have options. You don't have to, you don't have to go melee, but it's like Petrify Bolt. They have to deal with the Petrify Bolt, and that makes it even harder. And Panic Bolt as well. They have so many ways that Lucy can turn things into a 1v2. Sorry, 2v1. Well, 1v2 for the blue team. And once again, red team holding that center hard and being very committed to holding that center. However, at this point, Aim God taking a lot more heat. Axe is as it is. Axter. A lot of pressure coming in for Axter. And we should see another Astral Beam in a second. Skybrush loves their Astral Beams. Nice Sunrise there, getting in a lot of pressure on Axter, basically 2v1 situation. And double Petrify, and nice for Aim God there. Good Petrify situation. No stunning on, and now ooh, Axter under a huge amount of pressure, forcing Aim God out of the center and killing them, but now we have a 1v2 situation with a Lunar Strike. I mean, it was a good Petrification on Skybrush, but now Aim God in a 1v2 situation against counters and bulwarks. That's... And dealing with that is... It's not easy. Good Petrify, get it, that 2v1, or get the 2v1 down to a 1v1, but that's not going to be enough. It's just the health difference is way too huge. I mean, they really focused on Lucy. That was very sudden. That was extremely sudden. That was like... Lucy goes from having... Let's see, what was it? Where is it? Like, Lucy went from having almost... 100 some odd health to with one ultimate in one corner having like oops, I can do this with the mirror. Yeah, one ultimate later 
you have Lucy just getting knocked into the corner and torn apart. And that was it. You went from like 100 to basically dead. And forcing Ingot out of position. I mean, what was Ingot supposed to do, really, at that point? That wasn't much. Anyway, round four coming in here, and we have Inspiration for Only Hardcore. Wants that energy. Also, should point out that Shield Dash was increased. And all the Panic Flash stuff. Panic Flash cooldown reduced, and... Oh, never mind, it's revitalized, but still... Good setup for the Panic Flash. That's pretty much what Aster needs, is a lot of Panic Flasks, or Petrify Flasks. I mean, should point out, of course, for those of you not familiar, when you have Battle Rights that reduce the cooldowns of moves that are tied to EX moves, you don't actually get the EX move with the cooldown. So, if it says Panic Flask, it means Panic Flask, not Petrify Bolt. Or, in any other case, like, if it's... If it specifies a move, it means that move and not its EX move that's on the same button. So, if you use the move, you get the cooldown reduction, which means it lets you use the EX move faster, but using the EX move, you don't. And anyway, that's beside the point, because at this point, once again, Axter getting a huge amount of pressure down on them. Aim God doing a better job staying close, but not... It's really hard at this point, I mean... Other than EX Flame Strike, there isn't really a whole lot... Which I know has a different name. Doesn't really have a whole lot that can be done, that Ashker really has as far as team options. I mean, yeah, there's... There's Lava... The Molten Fist. There's Molten Fist. Okay, sure. There's Flame Strike, because it's stun. Okay, that's also true. Actually, Flame Strike's probably a better option at this point as well, because you're dealing with... I mean, with Flame Strike, you're basically getting a nice setup for... Stunning, so it means you can just deal damage, no problem. Petrify, of course, is the shield, but at the same time, that shield is... Well, it's... It's something you don't want to hit. You're basically using it to get them out of the fight. That's what you want. That's the main point. 